Apple announced a big change under, under the hood for its signature computers. A new lineup of Macs are debuting five months after Apple announced it'll be phasing out its 15-year reliance, 15 year reliance on Intel chips. Instead of it, Apple will be using its own processors. CEO Tim Cook held the third virtual event in the last three months to reveal these latest products. Let's take a listen. The M1 chip is by far the most powerful chip that we have ever created. It makes these Macs dramatically faster, provides all new capabilities with extraordinary battery life, and enables the Mac to run more software than ever. This is exactly why we are transitioning the Mac to Apple Silicon. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman covers Apple as closely as any reporter in the business. He joins me now. Hey, Mark, let's get right into the use of chips. Apple's new lineup of Macs use its own chip, the M1, as we all know right now. Talk a little bit about what this means for Apple. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here on with you on TickTick. This is a big advance for Apple. This is the first time they're taking their processor technology and using it on the scale and for performance metrics that are acquired by a Mac. This new M1 processor has an 8-core GPU, an 8-core CPU, a 16-core processor for machine learning tasks. So it's very much up to the task to replace some of those lower-end Intel machines. But, you know, as we reported already this morning or this afternoon, Apple is still selling Intel Macs at the high end, mm -hmm. uh, which means that they're not fully confident in replacing the whole line as of yet. Now, that's interesting because I wonder if this will impact future pricing of Apple's products. If so, should customers expect to pay less or more? So, so far, we have a three Macs with the new processor. They announced a Mac Mini today, a MacBook Air 13-inch, and a MacBook Pro 13-inch. In the case of the Air and the Pro laptops, they stayed at the same respective $999 and $1,300 price points. The Mac Mini desktop, however, dropped in price by $100. Hmm. So to me, that might mean that they're able to get the power and price a little bit better for the consumer on the desktops, but it's about the same for the laptop. So I'd be very surprised in either direction if they raised the prices or lowered the prices. I think we're going to stick to the at current price ranges they have for some of those higher-end computers into the future, for sure. Okay. Now, getting into the business of chip makers, what kind of message does Apple now having its own chip, what kind of message? does this send to chip makers like Intel, which it used for the last 15 years? Yeah, this is a big blow to Intel, not in terms of sales. So the estimates that I've seen is that this is going to cause a three to four billion dollar impact to Intel in the near term, which it's a lot of money for, you know, an individual, but for a major public company like Intel, three to four billion dollars is not the end of the world. Apple really only represents between seven and ten percent of Intel's, you know, annual sales. But what it does do is it means that Intel is losing a big name brand provider or a name brand customer, I should say, in Apple. And what that might do is inspire other computer makers that Intel does get a lot of its business from to perhaps look in another direction. Maybe it's a transition to Qualcomm processors, which is, of course, the biggest maker of ARM chips, which Apple's leveraging to make its own designs. Now, Apple making its own chips also means Macs will be able to use uh, apps that were originally developed for iPhones. How could this possibly change Apple's relationship with maybe either software companies or maybe even companies that provide apps in the first place? How could this change those relationships? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point, right? So you'll be able to run an iPhone app natively on a Mac for the first time. You were already able to do that with some iPad apps, mm -hmm. required a little bit of work from the developer, but now it's going to be completely native. Uh, for developers, this means just another screen to, to sell their apps on, right? Which can mean more money for developers, more money for Apple's services revenue, so perhaps a better relationship overall. I don't think the user experience is going to be that great early on. A lot of these iPhone apps are really optimized for touchscreens, which, as you know, of course, the Mac does not have. So we'll see if eventually they move to a touchscreen Mac. But for now, I think it's going to be a minor convenience rather than a great experience boost.
Okay. Now, an analyst or several analysts, they've said that Apple starting to make its own chips is a first of many more companies doing the same thing. One analyst in particular at Wedbush noted this cross-pollination between software and hardware. Can you elaborate on what that means a little bit? So I think what that analyst is referring to is Apple developing both now the hardware and software means for a more integrated experience. Mm -hmm. So that means right now, if you use a Mac, sometimes you see the fans go crazy, right? If you're watching a movie or doing some you know, heavy Final Cut or movie or video editing work. And right now, if you use an iPad, those don't have fans. Those barely overheat. You barely have problems with them. And part of that is because Apple designs both the hardware and software, the underlying chips, as well as the software that runs on it. Now you're seeing that same unified experience for the Mac, uh, which could mean better overall products because of that deeper hardware and software integration and, and connectivity. Okay, okay. Now that's interesting. It makes sense, though, um, that that would naturally happen. And before we go, I want to ask you about the holiday season. As we know, Apple is apparently selling more Macs these days because people are working from home and they're having to teach their kids from home. But what kind of uh, forward-looking views did Apple give for the holiday season? Any expectations at all? Yeah, so because of the coronavirus and for other business reasons, Apple has not been giving actual guidance or revenue forecasts for the for the next quarter mm -hmm. or even for the, the entire fiscal year. What the estimates we're seeing are it shows that Apple could hit its first $100 billion quarter uh, for this current Q1 we're in right now, which they'll report at the end of January 2021. But the, the thing to pay attention to is how many iPhones are actually able to sell. So that number is basically almost entirely relying on the success uh, of the iPhone. Hmm. I, I will be interested to see if these Macs make any imprint on that. But of okay. course, as you said, the, the Mac revenues for the previous quarter were very strong. You know what I wonder, just out of curiosity, the iPhone is the, the most important seller of Apple, as you just said. What's like number two? Oof, so number two, we are in basically a three-way tie at this point. Uh, between services. So services is the number two, but that's not a hardware product. But in terms of hardware products, we're in an almost three-way tie between the Mac, um, the iPad, as well as a little bit below that are other products. So a mix of the AirPods, Apple hmm. Watches, and Apple TV. So okay. services is a hard number two, but product-wise, it's really iPad, Mac, and Apple Watch are basically all tied. But the thing we can't forget is that all these other things that Apple sells, people only buy them because they have iPhones, right? Mm -hmm. You buy Apple Music and Apple TV because you have an iPhone. You buy right. Apple Watch and AirPods because you have an iPhone. Even the iPad and the Mac, you know, a bunch of those are probably going to iPhone users. So it all revolves around the iPhone, if I'm being totally honest. Makes sense. It makes sense. Thank you so much, Mark Gurman, for joining us. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.